hokum. Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. For humans, and just about every other creature on Earth, sleep is an unavoidable experience. There don't seem to be any complex organisms that don't have some sleep requirement, and without it, don't eventually suffer the ultimate penalty. Sleep will not be ignored. Studies with animals are clear. Going without sleep long enough is certain death. For rats, it never goes much longer than 11 days before the end always comes. After enough time goes by without rest, a certain point of no return for every animal is crossed and the damage is irreversible. It's still a mystery why animals share this odd activity and why we can't seem to live without it. There would be a huge evolutionary advantage to shedding this sleep habit. Spending a third of one's life in forced unconsciousness in a world filled with bears, leopards, poisonous snakes, and other hostile humans isn't the best ingredient for evolutionary success. Sleep is a very inconvenient requirement if you think about it, and having to deal with the problem every day is just ridiculous. It's an addiction shared by all animals. Anyone who's ever been overworked and underslept knows it's a demon on your back. Going without sleep results in a progressive sort of illness that slowly rots the brain and body. Science has a lot of questions to answer about how and why this happens. Part of the problem is that it's difficult to construct ethical experiments around totally depriving people of sleep. However, there are some people out there who have gone way further than anyone else. I'm not talking about just pulling an all-nighter. There are people who have gone weeks without sleeping. Just like people who have gone further out in space or deeper in the ocean than anyone else, there are explorers who push the boundary of sleep. There are people who have pushed it further than I could have imagined, and with interesting and frightening results. Who are these outliers? Who are the extreme examples of those who have gone further than anyone else to fight the power of exhaustion? The most famous and best documented case was a 17-year-old college student, Randy Gardner, who was trying to make it into the Guinness Book of World Records. He remained awake for 264 hours, or 11 days. It's often reported that Gardner suffered no serious physical problems during the experiment, and that therefore, sleep deprivation is not that dangerous. This misconception has become widespread over the years. It's true that Gardner didn't die during the experiment or fall into permanent drooling catatonia. What a lot of the reports on this case seem to leave out is that Gardner suffered long-lasting permanent damage from this 11-day sleep deprivation. One of the issues, besides the ethical ones, that comes up with studies of sleep deprivation is the slippery way sleep seems to sneak its way in. Microsleep is the phenomenon of falling asleep very briefly and frequently in the body's attempt to recover some rest. In Randy Garner's attempt for the world record, he was monitored by several people around the clock, including sleep researcher William Dement and John J. Ross of the U.S. Navy Medical Neuropsychiatric Research Unit in San Diego. One of the famous stories from the experiment was that Gardner actually beat Dement in a game of ping pong on day 11, being without any sleep. Some even cite this as evidence that extreme sleep deprivation has little effect. It's more like evidence that William Dement was just terrible at ping pong. The researchers reported serious cognitive and behavioral changes in Randy, including rapid changes in mood, problems with concentration and short-term memory, also paranoia and hallucinations. John Ross also reported, on day two, Randy had difficulty focusing his eyes and recognizing objects. And on day three, Ross reported extreme moodiness in Gardner and some signs of problems with motor skills, also the inability to repeat certain verbal phrases. On day four, Gardner's irritability uncooperative attitude became more serious. He experienced memory lapses and increased difficulty concentrating. He experienced his first hallucination, a street sign that morphed into a person. Then he suffered a delusional episode in which he imagined that he was a famous football player. On day five, the hallucinations became more intense and detailed. Randy saw a path open up in the room in front of him 
and extend into a sunny green forest. On day six, he started having serious difficulty with speech and identifying the names of common objects. On days seven and eight, Randy experienced increased irritability, slurring of his speech, and increased memory lapses. By day nine, his thinking was totally fragmented and he couldn't complete any sentences. And on day 10, his paranoia reached a level of concern. He became focused on a radio show host who Gardner felt was trying to humiliate him over the air. By day 11, he couldn't communicate and his face no longer had any expression. His speech was slurred and flat. He couldn't perform basic counting and subtraction. However, he had beaten the record and achieved Guinness World Fame. Randy had joined the illustrious club of the fattest baby and the man with the longest fingernails. After completing his record, Gardner slept for over 14 hours. After a few days, he appeared to have fully recovered from his loss of sleep, showing no significant physical or mental problems. It took some time for the trouble to start. After a few years, Gardner reported experiencing debilitating insomnia for the rest of his life after this sleep stunt. In many ways, Gardner had an experience that was similar to another sleepless explorer, a New York disc jockey, Peter Tripp, who endured a 200-hour sleepless marathon to raise money for the March of Dimes. By the end of four days, he couldn't execute simple tests requiring basic concentration. Tripp began to experience hallucinations and distortions to visual perception. At one point, he became agitated and paranoid when he thought that the spots on the table were spiders and he complained that they had spun cobwebs on his shoes. He showed the same increasing moodiness and paranoia that Gardner did. On his last day, a neurologist was called in to examine Tripp before sending him home from the hospital. When Tripp met him, he had the delusion that the doctor was really an undertaker who was about to bury him alive. Peter Tripp was overwhelmed with fear. He screamed and tried to escape half-dressed down the hall with doctors and psychologists in pursuit. He couldn't distinguish between reality and nightmare. This same pattern of mental deterioration appears in psychosis. Several systematic studies of sleep deprivation and extreme sleep debt have come to the same conclusion. Prolonged sleep deprivation leads to a condition identical to a psychotic break. Even moderate sleep deprivation leads to demonstrated loss in mental faculties. Experiments have shown that simply losing an hour of sleep due to the spring shift and daylight savings time can increase traffic accidents by 7%. Since Randy Garner and Peter Tripp, some have pushed the sleep boundary even further and lived to tell. The record for the longest period without sleep is 18 days, 21 hours, and 40 minutes during a rocking chair marathon. The record holder reported hallucinations, paranoia, blurred vision, slurred speech, and memory and concentration lapses. Sleep deprivation is not for the faint of heart. In many shamanic cultures, it was part of initiation rituals and transcendental ceremonies. Pushing the sleep boundary was known to lift the veil between the material world and the spirit world. My experiences with sleep deprivation haven't taken it nearly as far as the subject of this episode. I've never gone longer than 36 hours without sleep, and that was enough to scare me straight. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.